Hi, I'm Emma Osborne, and this is my informative presentation on probiotics for my sports medicine three class at South Tahoe High School. Some history regarding probiotics is that the name of probiotics was derived from Latin, meaning for life. This was because they are a colony of live bacteria. They were discovered or invented back in 1907, which means that they have not learned a lot about them and are still trying to prove their effectiveness. There are many different types of probiotics. They are sectioned off into two different categories. The first of which is bacteria, which survive in the intestines. The most common bacteria probiotics are lactobacillus and bifidobacterium. The other category is yeast, which is naturally occurring throughout the human body. The most common yeast probiotic is Saccharomyces boulardii. Probiotics are a combination of live bacteria or yeast that naturally live in your body. Probiotics are also part of a large picture concerning bacteria in your body, your microbiome. Microbiome is a diverse community of bacteria and yeast that work together to keep balance and maintain health within the body. It contains trillions of microbes, which are a combination of bacteria, fungi, which includes yeast, and viruses that all live either on or inside of the body. One major factor to keep in mind is that everyone's microbiome is unique to them, which can affect the effectiveness of certain types of probiotics and make the effectiveness vary from person to person. The main function of probiotics is to introduce good bacteria that works to fight off the bad bacteria, support your immune function, and control inflammation, which will help restore the balance within your body. It also has other benefits that can vary due to the type of probiotic or one's microbes. Some of these are helping your body digest food, keeping bad bacteria from getting out of control and making you sick, creating vitamins, helping support the cells that line your gut to prevent bad bacteria that you may have consumed from entering your bloodstream and aiding in the breakdown and absorption of medicine. Although scientists are unsure of how effective probiotic supplements really are, they have linked them to a long list of things that they have been seen to help. This list contains something as simple as diarrhea, constipation, yeast infections, lactose intolerance, eczema, and UTIs that most people experience at least once in their lives. To a, seri to a serious as inflammatory bowel disease, irritable bowel syndrome, gum disease, upper respiratory infections, sepsis, specifically in infants, and even some mental disorders like depression and anxiety. These effects are so diverse because of the many different types of probiotics and differences in one's microbiome. One very good thing about probiotics is that they are generally considered safe for the general public. But no matter how safe something is, there are always risks to taking them. Some risks are they can trigger allergic reactions, and they could also cause mild stomach upset, diarrhea, flatulence, and bloating. You could also start developing an infection, a resistance to antibiotics, and a harmful byproduct from the probiotic supplement. Doctors recommend that people who have a weakened immune system, a critical illness, recently had surgery, or very sick infants not to take probiotics because they are at higher risk of developing these symptoms. With probiotics, you should always consult a doctor before taking them, just like you would any other medication. But this only pertains to the capsule or pill form of probiotics. Probiotics can be found in foods and drinks like yogurts and milks. The capsule, pills, powders, and liquids form 
are all a more concentrated dose that are created in a lab rather than being naturally occurring like it would be in food and drinks. Here is a list of all of the sources that I used for this informative presentation. And this concludes my Sports Medicine 3 Project 4 on probiotics.